Hello and welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for joining me here today. Today I'm busy getting a bit of gardening done. I bought some plants, I'm dividing some plants and I'm just enjoying the beauty of the garden. <laughs> the hydrangeas are waking up, everything's waking up. I'm so excited. <laughs> so without further ado, let's get straight into the video. Just down here, I've got a primrose. And just to the left of it there, that's where the chickens have been having a bit of a dust bath. Um, I'll just come around here. I'm going to zoom in a bit closer, actually. So, can you see this primrose? There are literally loads of primroses there. And there's no other primroses anywhere in the garden. Right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to dig up this primrose and divide it. I know it's in flower now, so it's not ideally the best time, um, but I'm going to do it anyway because I've got a bit of work to do here. So let's just grab it, shake some of this soil off. So if you can see it here, I'm going to start dividing it. Worms everywhere. Here goes. I know I'm probably breaking all the rules, but you know me. Here we go. See? Now look at that. I don't know if you can see. Look. Straight away. So I'm going to keep doing this, and then I'm going to spread these around the garden. I literally don't understand why there aren't any here. So it's quite an old house, and this is just, I think I broke that one, this is just the sort of plant that would be amazing. And another. More. So, what have I got? If you can see there now, I've literally got about 10 different plants from that one clump. So now I've got to find where I want them. So, this is the spot just in front of the pond here. So yeah, we haven't done much with the pond, um, but we can start somewhere. Now, first of all, it does have a lot of cow parsley. And so I think this is burdock. So I'm going to just dig a little bit up and I'm just going to scatter some of these here. So whilst I'm here, I just want to talk about this. This is our pear tree. Now, it's a very old pear tree and the previous owner said that it never used to produce fruit for her. For the past two years since we've been here, it has produced an abundance of fruit. Don't know why. Anyway, one of the things we notice is that there's all these suckers that are coming out from the base. And I suspect it's because it was planted too deep many years ago. So we did clear these suckers and we mulched it and I think that's helped. This year we haven't, but so I've been using these in my cut flower arrangements. They look so good and they last ages. So I'm just gradually trimming it away and using it for cut flowers. So 
Don't throw anything. <laughs> So there you go. I think that looks really pretty. I'm going to give these a really good watering in and hopefully this is the start of a really lovely outlook on the pond. Whew. Better go and wash my hands. So I'm really excited to tell you about some plants I've bought. Um, I went to a chat recently by um, the head gardener at Peter Bill's Roses. If any of you know about Peter Bill's Roses, oh my goodness, I'm so excited. I'm going to the chat, we got them discounted too, so it was really worthwhile. You know me, <laughs> I love a bargain. So I'm just going to get straight into telling you what they are. So let's start with Let's start with the clematis actually. He was really, it was a really good chat and he was telling us about the lovely companion plants to go with roses. And um, he was talking about different clematis that would work with different roses and different herbaceous plants and all that sort of thing. Um, now this particular clematis, I can't plant it yet because they've only recently been potted up, he told me. He said to keep it in, in the pot for a bit longer. But this one is called clematis niobe, niobe. I don't really know how you pronounce it but it's got gorgeous, gorgeous purpley flowers. So I'm really excited to get that planted. And I did spot this. These are some muscari. This one says it's called, hold on a second, Armeniacum. However, I don't know if you can see that. It looks like it's a really lovely pale blue. But when you go online and look at the pictures, of this particular variety they look more purpley so I'd be fascinated to know if this is just it it fading I don't know and the scent oh. actually I could have oh yeah I've got it the scent is lovely so this is not as invasive as, this is not as invasive I can't say it <laughs> this is not as invasive as some of the other varieties just think it's when you study the plants they're just like little tiny bells upside down but oh, I'll have to just show you so I'm in love with this I can't wait to get this established in the garden now the roses I bought so I've got this rose here called open arms it's a pink variety um, and I think it gets to about two and a half meters. So it's quite a good sized shrub rose. So I'm really excited to plant that. <laughs> I bought this one. I'm a bit of a sucker for names. Champagne moment. So I think that's gorgeous. It just looks absolutely gorgeous. And the other one I bought was it's called Sandringham. So we're in Norfolk. Got to have a Sandringham, haven't we? And I think is this one is this the yellowy one? Oh, it's a pink one as well so and what was interesting is he told us how to plant them and I, I didn't realize that you you need to bury the the union here and you actually have to bury the stems like this um so that's something i learned as well i would i think i would have gone in and planted it like this so but no you need to bury the union and water it in well um so i'm really excited to get this planted a couple of other little things i bought whilst i was there um, he swore by these. <laughs> They've got a funny name actually. Um, he spelt it and I think I'm going to do the same. Um, so he spelt it and you'll understand why. So the name of them, they're, some, they're called some snippers. They're a fruit pruner but he uses them for so many things. So you can use them for fruits and for bonsai and for flowers and things. Um, and it's spelt A-R-S. <laughs> and I get them out of the packet. 
can't wait to use these. Let's have a look. Look at them. And do all the packaging on top. Oh wow! I can't wait. Have I got anything to snip? <laughs> Let's grab a bit of this. Look. Oh, I think these are going to become my new best friend. I love them. I love them. Love them. Love them. Pop it all back. Keep them nice. And what was interesting, actually, I'll show you this. He actually, because I bought this too. I bought this. It's a sharpening tool. Um, I need to open it. How do I get into it? I want to get into it where I can still keep the instructions, but I don't think it's... Oh, here we go. Got it. He was saying, like, you know, you can... Um, I thought it twisted. Oh, yeah. You're saying you can just keep it in your pocket <laughs> not that you really need to walk around with this in your hand anyway so what he showed me i can't get into it now why is that not ah i see so with your secateurs he said there were two sides to it you've got the beveled side and the straight side and on this, so if you're sharpening the beveled side, you use the rounded side on this. And I think, I might be wrong, he was saying, just like that. And then he said, to do the flat side on the back, you use the flat side of this. Makes sense really, doesn't it? So I think I'm, I'm going to make sure I get into the habit every time. I use my secateurs or my pruners, I'm going to use this. Perhaps I will keep it in my pocket. <laughs> now I'll probably lose it then, won't I? I'm really pleased with those. <laughs> so, put these back in here for now. I'm really, really excited about getting this garden planted up. Um, now, I don't usually go out and buy plants like this, I have to say. I've been trying to do most of it on a budget. As, a, as you saw earlier in the video, um, the primroses, getting those for free. However, there are some things that I think it is worth spending a little bit on. And you are just going to get so much enjoyment out of these things. I mean, a pound for these, that's absolutely fine because these are just going to do and do and do. So just listening to the bees <laughs> okay right I need to crack on with some more right so now we're going to be getting on with making a raised bed um, I'm going to just chuck this cardboard on here and put some compost on I've got some raspberries to go in here um, and it's just so easy to do um, I, as you can see over there I've got some raspberries that um, they were some old raspberries that um, did last year um, so I'm going to dig those up and put them in so here I am starting off with my comp uh, with my cardboard and all you've got to do is lay it on the ground make sure that you tuck in the edges and things um, so you can see here I'm just tucking it underneath the uh, wooden plank there um, and there are a couple of gaps and what I'm going to do is fill in that with a tiny little bit of cardboard because I can guarantee you those weeds will find their way through those little gaps <laughs> so yeah make sure that you cover the gaps um, I think I am going to stick it underneath. Um, actually, no, I'm going to put it under the box here <clears throat> um, and make sure it's weighted down so that it's not going to move at all. And just keep adding the cardboard. Please remember as well, when you are adding cardboard, that you take all these sort of tape off and any labels and things as much as you possibly can because you really don't want to be sort of finding all that in your soil. Um, so, yeah. I'm just laying down this cardboard and then I'm going to get on with the uh, putting on the compost. Unfortunately, I've had to buy a bagged compost this year, uh, but my 
goal is to just try and create as much compost as I possibly can because it's really expensive. We don't know what we're getting when we're buying it. It's not very good for the environment to just keep buying it as well. Um, and obviously the cost, it's so expensive. So, uh, yeah, I've just put some compost on and I'm just raking it all out here because it's got a bit clumpy in the bag. And pretty much it's as simple as that. I think um, you need to put a couple of inches there, good two to three inches. Um, I spent a day with Charles Dowden recently on a sort of no dig gardening day. And he was sort of, you know, saying get a good few inches on there um, and yeah, just rake it all on. Uh, one of the questions I did ask him actually was about if you could stand on the soil. And he said, yes, you can. It's not going to cause it too much harm. And um, obviously you don't want to keep on trampling it, but yeah. So yeah, he said you can stand on it and walk on it and things. And actually one interesting point he did make was that when you lay your compost, the actual levels of it, the two to three inches that you need, um, should be when it is sort of tamped down because the um, if you're just doing it when it's light and fluffy it will sink very um, over the time with all the weather at it and everything um, so yeah just be mindful that um, it is sort of I don't know what the word sort of compressed down a little bit just so you know you've got a good amount of compost on there but to be honest whatever you can get on it should be fine so here I am doing my little dance on the um, <laughs> on the soil Right, I'm really pleased with that. Um, now to go and get the raspberries and get them planted. So these are some raspberries that I did have them in a sort of area up here last year. Um, they were behind the chicken run and didn't really do anything. So um, I'm now going to dig them up and plant them. They're autumn fruiting raspberries and they should do pretty well, one hopes. <laughs> Oh, the chickens are always following me. Whenever I'm doing any digging in the garden, there they are because all the worms and the bugs and the ants and things come up and they absolutely love it. <laughs> so I love having chickens in the garden. It just brings the whole garden alive. So I'm now just going to prune these. It's slightly get, pushing it a bit for um, doing it. It should have been done by now. But with autumn fruiting raspberries, you always prune them down to almost above the ground, sort of one or two inches above. Um, and because they fruit on fresh new growth. So I'm just going to prune all of these and job done.
There we go. Not bad. On this side you've got the golden raspberries and these are some just some autumn ones that I had. In the distance there I've got various fruit and there's some more raspberries there. And the plan is to sort of extend it more this way. So yeah. So the next job that I'm doing is um, I'm tackling my front garden. Now this is our driveway and I found all these bricks buried underneath the soil. They were obviously an edge at some point and I'm setting about repurposing them um, and basically redoing them and making it sort of an edge to the driveway. Our driveway is a bit of a nightmare. It's full of weeds um, and it's just a constant headache. Um, so I want an edge to define where it's going to be. So I sort of started a little bit and I'm just going to carry on. It's a killer of a job, I have to say. Um, and there's all tree roots and everything and it's really, really hard work. But it is worth it in the end because it looks so good and it just seems right for the house somehow. I have done this elsewhere um, against the front of the house and we've got some lavender beds there. Um, and so basically I know I'm not using any membrane or anything. I'm literally scraping the soil back and doing it that way. Um, needs must at the moment. Um, so, but actually it's pretty easy really. And yeah, it looks really good. Oh dear, so hard work though. <laughs> This section down here, I'm just trying to show you here, and um, this is where some of them are still stuck in the ground. I can't get them out because there's roots and things. So I've come out about a sort of foot or so from those. But yeah, I just thought I'd show you that. <laughs> So here is the half finished article. I've run out of bricks, so I've had to stop there. Um, I'll have to dig up some more um, to continue it. But yeah, it looks good so far. I'm really pleased with it. Oh, so I finished off the day with a bonfire um, and a cup of tea, of course. <laughs> um, and until next time, <laughs> bye.